Apple always claims iPads are replacing people's laptops. Is that still true? Can that still apply today? Well, with potentially new iPads right around the corner this Tuesday, I think now would be a good time to think, what are iPads doing more today that they used to not be capable of? And can they truly replace your laptop? On top of that, I would like to also mention some apps I recommend, some tips and tricks that I may be repeating today because I've talked about these apps in the past before, but we have a lot of new subscribers. In fact, we just crossed 80,000, which means that there's a lot of new viewers watching and I thought I'd recommend those apps to you. So first of all, that first question though, can an iPad replace your laptop? And of course the answer is it depends. Everyone knows that, but today's video, we should be focusing on where you draw that line. And I can say from watching people in my personal life, a lot of people who use laptops for either using social media, writing documents, writing emails, maybe watching some movies, even playing some music. People who used laptops for casual things or even some light workplace things like spreadsheets and documents, for them iPads can replace a lot of what they do, especially my parents. They used to have a desktop computer that they would use for all their email and browsing the web. Now they don't need to because they have iPads. They're a lot cheaper, they're a lot more portable, they can pack them into bags easier. They even find them easier to read on because of their touchscreen interface, which means that renting things on Amazon Kindle and iBook are a lot easier to read through. And I do think it's safe to say they apply to a lot of the population. A lot of people are like them. There's less and less reason to buy a laptop anymore. The more expensive, batteries won't be as good. And what's interesting about this new iPad revolution, more people switching to that, is it means that there's not as many ports as there used to be. Now you can't use thumb drives anymore. Now there's no SD card slots. So what changes people's demand? Now we have more people storing things in the cloud and using less flash drives, less things being stored locally and more things pushed to the cloud. And I know a lot of people probably saw the title of this video and went straight to the comments just to say iPads can never be truly as good as a laptop. They don't have the right architecture. They don't have the right app support. I can't run Adobe Premiere on my iPad. So tablets will never replace laptops. Keep in mind the number of people who use laptops for more and more pro features, that demographic is kind of shrinking and that is by no means the majority. There is a whole new market now that is growing. If you look at tablet sales in 2017, primarily iPad, but to me that's because Apple's the only company making really good tablets. Tablets. If you start to bring up the Surface lineup, we can kind of debate which is better, but most people would agree the Surface Pro does not count as a tablet. It's more of a laptop. A lot of people may not know this, but this very channel, before we got some real traction and before this was my full-time job, I actually made all of the tech videos on my iPad Pro. Long-term viewers remember this, but originally I would film all my videos in that attic with the green walls in my little DSLR. The same DSLR we used in the S9 unboxing video, the straight down angle. Still have that camera, still works great. That was my only camera. I would film with that. Take the SD card, plug it into this little guy, which I highly recommend for people who are interested in starting their own YouTube channels and are on a huge budget. Maybe they can't even afford a good laptop to edit on. iPads are fairly capable when it comes to video editing and they don't cost that much. A good one even costs like 600 bucks. Trying to find a MacBook that good? Yes, well, it'll be capable of running Final Cut Pro and Adobe products. Still is quite a bit out of the range of what a lot of people can afford with iPads today. This, I think it's like like a $30 adapter, but you can probably find cheaper ones on Amazon now. It just lets you plug an SD card into your iPad and then you can import it directly into photos. It could even take 4K video and you could load that into iMovie and edit it in there. This is my first video editing app I recommend to people who want to edit videos, make some good looking stuff on their iPad. It is a very capable editing app. I'm very confused why it doesn't support the iPhone X's display yet, but still I highly recommend it because it's good at loading in music and doing cutaway shots, which was a big deal for this channel. I needed to be able to make lots of jump cuts, add music, and add cutaway shots so you guys can see what I was talking about. You'll notice on the Android market, apps that are capable of doing all these kinds of things are not very common, whether that's because there's no developers over there, there's no people buying apps over there, or maybe it's just because Snapdragon processors are slow and no one wants to even try, but Apple has several good editing options for when it comes to iPad, when it comes to video editing. Now we're already seeing with the iPad Pro lineup that Apple can even push 120 hertz to Displays, which means that even if you want to bring up, well, tablet, iPads, they can't do the same kind of gaming performance as my laptop. Of course, that's true. They're much cheaper. They're much thinner. They don't have fans. But there are a lot of games on the App Store that support the iPad Pro, which is an above 1080p display. And a lot of those games are supported at 120 hertz, that ProMotion. And I'll echo that to all you people who defend the Razer phone so much. It has that 120 hertz display. This makes it a good phone for gamers, or it's a gaming phone. You guys can't seem to decide. Regardless, 
regardless, that can still apply to the iPad lineup. On top of that, just because I've moved on to bigger cameras, bigger editing rigs, I'm not saying that professional YouTubers can forever edit everything on an iPad, but it's great for people in education, it's great for people who are learning, and I definitely learned a lot from just running my entire YouTube channel on one iPad. Via apps like Puffin, which is a desktop emulator. If you download this app, you can quickly, by default, access the desktop versions of a lot of web pages. So for instance, for creators in YouTube Studio, when you do it on mobile, a lot of the options are turned off and it just keeps telling you to go use the YouTube app. And even the Creator Studio app does not allow you to do a lot of things. So I have the Puffin app for those features I can't access on Creator Studio. For instance, when your videos get demonetized, you can't review them on mobile. You have to use a desktop. But if you use that Puffin emulator, you can request a review from your iPad or even your iPhone. You can add mid-roll ads to longer videos if you're on desktop. When you're on mobile, you cannot add ads to the middle of your videos, only on the front and end. And of course, with the help of a pretty cheap stylus, you can be very precise on that larger display. Whether it be Apple Pencil or some third-party one, it helps a lot, while still being under that price point of a typical laptop. So yeah, I edited quite a bit of videos in 4K on my 2015 iPad Pro. I don't have the need to do that anymore because I've moved on to larger things. In trying to edit these types of videos that take up hundreds and hundreds of gigs would not be very practical on an iPad. But if you're just starting, if you're growing up and you want to learn, I definitely think that experience of using it on a smaller device in that interface will make you appreciate the days of switching up at a later point. So don't get me wrong, when I'm talking about this video about iPads replacing laptops, I'm not saying no laptop has a purpose. I should bring up that in 2016, when I got my MacBook Pro, that laptop ran the entire network for several years. They're not useless, I'm just saying that for the vast majority of people and a lot of people learning and coming up, iPads are great affordable tools for learning all this kinds of stuff. Another app that's a little bit pricey, but I've recommended it in the past and seen a lot of success with a lot of up and coming creators is the Luma Fusion app, which works on iPads. And this is kind of a premier version of iMovie. So if iMovie seems a little bit too basic on the iPad, this app gives you lots more options. You can do multiple layers. And the big appeal for me in Luma Fusion is it has export settings. So when you're exporting something, you can decide what you want the bit rate to be. If you want this to take up a bunch of space and look really good, you can allow that, which is really nice, especially since we have iPad Pros that have half a terabyte of storage now. That's pretty cool. So apps like that really have more customization and options for when you want to get into some more hardcore editing. That does cost a bit more than iMovie because I think iMovie's free now. But if you're considering just trying to take an iPad challenge and edit stuff just on that, you could be like my good friend Randy, who we recently had on the Talos of Tech podcast. Really friendly guy, and he also did the iPad Pro challenge where for a while he just edited all his stuff on his iPad. And it comes out pretty good. So he can attest to LumaFusion for being a pro editing app. Even though I've moved on to stuff like the iMac Pro, I still use my iPad for my job every single day with this app called Over. I've recommended Over a lot, but I cannot stop recommending it. It's basically a very intuitive and user-friendly version of Photoshop. You can mask things, you can add different text fonts, you can install your own fonts. It does cost a little bit of money if you want to pay for certain packages, but it really helps me when making video thumbnails. There's even a specific section that lets you search Google for already pre-made masked out objects. So if I want to bring in something like the iPhone 10, I can just search that. If I want to bring in the Essential Phone or the S9 to a video, you can just Google search it and it will show you a bunch of pre-masked images that it's found online. That's extremely helpful for photo editing. It has drop shadow options, color options, masking options. Overall, just a very useful app. And you can even save things as a PNG, as a JPEG, and they even let you keep certain files in the cloud. So those are my go-to apps for people who are trying to make YouTube videos or trying to make video content with an iPad is iMovie, LumaFusion, Over, and Puffin, of course, if you want to be a YouTuber. And of course, accessories like this, the SD card to lightning adapter, which allows you to use professional cameras with your iPad. Because while iPads can have pretty good cameras and your iPhone can have a pretty good camera, I still don't think any smartphone can really compete to what a DSLR can produce. They have actual optical zooms, which helps with videos looking better. And the sensors are actual sensors. They're not cameras trying to guess what an image is supposed to look like. Our phones are getting really, really good at recording video, but that compression is hard to ignore. That's why I recommend finding some cheaper DSLRs. There's a lot on Amazon. And you can start your own little studio now just with an iPad, being the core of everything, being able to export, make your video thumbnails. Even for some cutaway shots, the cameras on them are not that bad. And I thought this would be a fun thing to highlight as it sounds like we're about to get an even cheaper iPad available this Tuesday. If that's true, I hope this video is helpful for you. If people are interested in buying that really, really affordable iPad, use some of that extra money on some of these pro apps so you can do some cool things. They have great games on them too. I use my iPad Pro for gaming all the time. I love using Netflix and picture-in-picture -picture while I'm playing games, so even multitasking 
seems really good. It's just an overall very capable device. And for a lot of people, that's all they need from a laptop. So I think over the next decade, we're gonna see a lot more people, especially in the consumer market who are just like, do I really need a whole laptop? I think an iPad can get me by. Can do some light video editing, some cool gaming while not breaking the bank account. So I hope if there's some up and coming YouTubers watching, you can take that into consideration. You can be on a budget. And even if you don't wanna edit a bunch of videos on your iPad, there's still great productivity tools, great for typing, great for making video thumbnails as I still do. And I think it's cool to see them rise in the user market as more people adopt to just having a touch screen and not using a mouse as much as we used to. What are your thoughts on this? I'd love to hear them down in the comments below. This is your Apple Shapiro and I will see you in the next one.